I'm Kip Clark from Alton Advanced Bodywork and today uh, we're going to talk to you about um, exercises to help avoid lower back pain and to keep your lower and mid back um, healthy. Um, yeah, um, I'm an advanced clinical massage therapist and specialist in the treatment of chronic pain. People who should avoid these exercises are people, who, if you've got a recent back injury, um, it's still quite acute and inflamed then um, avoid these exercises. If you've got spondylolisthesis um, or if you've got a, a more serious back pathology, check with your doctor or physiotherapist before doing these exercises. Right, so the first exercise we're going to do um, just helps open the facet joints, decompress the discs and uh, relaxes the, the lower back. So you're just going to lie on your back like so and you just grab hold of your knees and then you're just gently rocking your knees back and forth. And the, the higher you move your knees, the higher up in your lumbar spine you go. So with, with, with this at right angle, you're pretty much getting the sacroiliac and the lower lumbar vertebrae, like so. And if you bring your knees a bit closer, coming up into the uh, higher lumbar back as well. So you can alter the position on these just to get the uh, some of the tight bits. Okay, next one um, we're going to rock the knees from side to side. Um, you can either do this with your feet on the floor or to make it harder you can have your knees up in the air as well. So I'm going to take a breath in Take a breath in, breathe out, drop the knees to the side, just wait a second for the back to relax, breathe in, take the knees back up, breathe out, drop it to the other side, breathe in, pulling the core muscles in, take the knees up, breathe out, the other side. Breathe in, pull the core in, knees up, drop it to the other side. This gets the lumbar spine rotating as well as and gets the uh, helps release some of the muscles. Okay. Remember if that's too difficult, you can just do it with your heels on the ground like so. Right, um, the next exercise is um, a type of Pilates to strengthen the core muscles that support the spine. Very important to uh, strengthen the core to keep your lower back healthy and to stop you putting your back out. So I'm going to lie on my back, I'm going to put my, the heels of my hands on my hip bones here, top of the pelvis, and I'll put my fingertips on the pubic bone just above the groin. And what I'm going to do is get myself comfortable. The spine's in neutral, so it's not completely flat against the ground, and it's not curved forwards too much. So you, you want the pelvis in a natural position, not, not tilted back or tilted forward. What I'm going to do is engage the core muscles. So I'm going to pull my belly button down towards my spine, tense my abdomen. And with this exercise, what I'm trying to do is move my feet like so, but uh, I'm using my core muscles to stop my pelvis and spine moving around to stabilise my pelvis and spine. Um, so um, you can do this again with the heels on the floor, it is easier like that. I'm going to do it with my feet up in the air, slightly more difficult. And the lower you go with the, the lower you go with the heels, 
more difficult it is as well. So you can uh, gradually increase the difficulty of the exercise. So, get my hands in the right place. So I'm going to pull my core muscles in, engage the abdomen, and then I'm just going to move my legs. Okay, I did 15 passes there. You can um, start maybe doing about 10 and try and build up to doing um, doing 20. Um, okay, so you have um, have a little rest between sets, and then you do another set. But um, again, remember you're really trying to stabilise that pelvis, stop it wiggling around. Tips on pubic, pubic bone and heels on hip bones. Pull the core in. Remember to breathe while you're doing it. Don't hold your breath. But then you won't be able to take deep breaths because of the engaging the core muscles. Make sure your back isn't arching forward, you're keeping it a natural curve, not letting it arch up. Okay, so we did another set of 15. Okay, next exercise. I'm going to do a back extension using a, a Swiss ball. Um, if, you, if you haven't got a Swiss ball or, or you want to do it another way, you can simply lie on your front and tense your abdomen in and lift. Lift your legs just a few inches off the, the floor. This works the same back extensor muscles. Like so, I'm going to do it using a ball. So you pop your feet against the door, um, or or some, something just to stabilise yourself, and you can put the ball in your tummy, but the, the, the lower down your body the ball goes, the harder the exercise. So I'm going to put it in my groin, so that I've got to lift more of my body weight, makes it harder. Feet on the door. Otherwise, uh, you tend your feet tend to come up. Might have to move your t-shirt a bit. Okay. I'm gonna put my hands here and just I'm breathing out as I go up. making sure I come right up so I feel the muscles pulling right down into the sacrum. If you only come up a little bit, you won't get the lower back muscles. You don't get the muscles in the mid back. To get the ones right there down to the bottom, you've got to extend the back slightly.
So we'll just have a little rest um, between exercises. Okay. Okay, we did 20 there, um, so with this exercise, start doing about 15 and try and build up to doing about 30. One more set. Okay, so that's uh, two sets of that exercise. Um, what we might do now is uh, do some peel downs. So we're actually trying to peel down uh, on the spine, the mid, mid spine and the lower back. And we're trying to drop each vertebrae into the ground, relax it down to the ground individually. So with these exercises, you don't, you don't move on until you feel that area of your back relax. Um, if you've got stiff spinal segments, that they will ache and it will feel sore. But just wait and eventually um, it will soften and hopefully drop down. So, we'll do the mid back first. So, lie on my back, knees up, arms out. Raise my body up like so. I'm going to get my spine sunk into the ground. Now I'm going to slowly drop my bottom down towards the ground while trying to relax the thoracic spine, let the vertebrae drop down. So it's a bit stiff there, a bit stiff and sore, so I'm waiting and trying to soften that area of the spine as it drop down. We'll do that one more time. Up. And really try and relax that area of the spine if you tense against it. It won't work so well. Now we're going to do the lumbar spine, and we do we start from being sat up with the knees up, and again I tend to hold my arms forward and take a breath in. And as we breathe out, we're trying to let the, the spine curve towards the, the ground and the vertebrae drop back. This works the abdominals quite well as you're going down. And drop one vertebrae at a time right up into the thoracic spine. Okay. I'll do that again, so just going to breath in, curl forwards, and let the vertebrae drop down. Slowly. I'm going to put my 
hands from the hips and slowly drop in down one at a time. I'm going to drop my shoulders to the ground. Okay, um, we're going to do some leg lifts now. These to, to work with the glutes, particularly the glute medius muscle. And to isolate the glute medius, we want to keep our toes turned down towards the ground slightly as we lift the leg. What tends to happen is as people go up, they let their foot twist outwards, uh, coming into the lateral quads and a, a muscle called tensor fasciolata, um, which we usually don't need to strengthen. Um, we're trying to get gluteus medius, so we keep the toes pointed down. Not up. Okay. So, lie on the side, lower leg bent. I've got to keep my hip pointing to the ceiling. People's hips will tend to drop back, um, and that again means they're using the wrong muscles. So make sure this hip stays up towards the ceiling. You can put your hand on your hip if you like. And we're just raising the leg up, and lowering it slowly. Okay, I did 12 there, but um, you probably want to start doing about 8 or 10 and build up to doing um, 20 if possible. Okay, so we'll do the other side. sure that toe stays pointed down as well. So um, we'll do one more set, so we'll do two sets on each side. Again, uh, as I'm contracting the muscle, I'm breathing out. So breathe in, and uh, it's good to pull your core in as you do this exercise as well. Tense the stomach muscles whenever you're doing any back exercises, give them a bit of extra work. Lifting my foot probably about three quarters of a metre high. If you're shorter, obviously, it won't be as high as that. Have a look at your hip, make sure you're not dropping it back. set on the left side.
Yes, that's uh, leg raises. Okay, um, next exercise, um, we're going to do a spinal rotation stretch because all, all, the, all the vertebrae in the spine tend to get a bit stiff and stuck together and it's good to help free them up again. So what we'll do here is I'm going to lie on my side I'm going to have my knees bent to 90 degrees to right angles and, so, and my hips as well. together over on the left hand side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace a semicircle round above my head in this way a bit taking a breath in as we go up breath out as we open out so hands together knees and hips bent to 90 degrees okay so take a breath in Breathe out. And this is a good stretch of the chest as well, which is involved in a lot of upper back complaints, being too short and tight. Again, trying to relax the chest and all the back just to let it rotate and open. Spine. You can make that more difficult by dropping your top knee down to the floor. Um, it makes it more of a stretch. If you find you're not getting a stretch on the chest or the back can go further. Okay, so on the other side. Hands together, knees and hips bent. So you take a breath in. As you trace up round and breathe out and then open out and then just relax into it. Try and keep the knees together on the other side, don't let the uh, upper leg lift off the lower leg. Okay, right then, so um, what we'll do now, um, we're going to do an exercise called a scapular retraction. This is to help strengthen the muscles in the mid-back um, and to keep your posture a bit better. To help strengthen, because all the muscles at the front tend to get too tight and short in the, in, the, in the pecs and the upper traps, whereas the ones at the back tend to get too weak and long, so we're going to strengthen those. So you stand up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Pull my shoulder blades together, pull my shoulder blades together, and then I'm going to pull them down my back, but without trying to push my tummy forward. So if I turn around, I bring my shoulder blades together and then pull them down the back, and then hold. One. Okay, so I held that for, for five seconds, putting my shoulder blades in and down, tucking them into my back pockets is a good way of thinking about it. Another one, so pull them in and then down, trying not to push the belly forward. that for 10 seconds, we're going to do five of these, so
Um, we'll do some stretches now. So um, we'll stretch the rhomboids to start with. There we just worked. So I'm going to, well, hold my hands around the wrist so you can interlink your fingers. I'm going to take a breath in. I'm going to lean my head forward. I'm going to push my mid back out while stretching my arms forward. So breath in and breathe out. I'm really pushing my mid back out while reaching my arms forward. You can alter the position slightly to get different tight bits. So if you're a bit tight in the uh, inside the shoulder there, but on the left, you might want to lean right a bit to isolate that area, like so. Maybe lean over to the right a bit to get the other one. Basic stretch is just pushing your mid back out like so. Okay, you hold all stretches for about 30 seconds. Quadratus lumborum, we're going to uh, end your obliques here. To stretch the left side, you put the left leg behind the right leg, interlink the fingers behind the head, breath in, breathe out, keeping the um, back leg straight, that's important, bending the the uh, front leg if you want well, to, to sink into the stretch. So breath in, breathe out. And I'm just leaning to the right, pushing my left hip sideways, trying to relax into the stretch. Again, have a look at your body and make sure you're not twisting to make the stretch easier. You want your hips and body to be facing forward. the area as we go. Okay, so we'll do the other side. So right leg behind this time. And again, keeping that back leg straight, bending the front leg as needed. So breath in. We're going to lean to the left while pushing the right hip out. Trying to open up the side of the body. You can reach up with the arm you need to to get a stretch, but I'm getting one like that. Really waiting for the muscle to release and, and lengthen. Okay, right. We'll do the glutes and the lumbar spine now. So lying down, you're going to cross my left left knee over my right leg. I'm going to use this hand to keep the hip on the ground um, to isolate the glutes that cause a lot of lower back pain. Breath in, breathe out. I'm just easing my, my left knee down towards the ground while keeping this down. And you can alter the position of the knee to get different bits of the muscle. Okay, I'm going to let, this time I'm going to do a similar stretch, but I'm going to let the hip come off the ground to come more into the lower back, to, to stretch the lower back muscles and rotate the lumbar spine. So another breath in, so I've got my, my heel up in the air this time, breathe out, and letting the hip roll off the ground this time. myself and open the chest a bit. Okay, 
So do the other side. Cross that knee over there. Keep that hip down this time. Breath in. Knees the right knee down towards the left side of the body. To the floor. Not trying to force the stretch, just trying to wait for the body to let the muscle go. Okay, so now I'm going to let the hip come off the ground this time to bring the stretch into the lower back. So another breath in. very hard to relax the back muscles if you've actually got back pain at the moment but try and be aware if you're tensing against it because of the pain and just try and let the area go don't do any damage Okay, we're going to stretch the psoas muscle now, which comes from the front of the spine down to the inner thighs. And although, um, well, although it comes down the front, it's involved with a lot of lower back pain by being too tight and short and pulling the spine forward and the pelvis forward. So very important to stretch it with any, uh, any work you're doing for your back. So I'm going to kneel down uh, with my right knee down and this knee up. I'm going to, it's very important to keep the hips forward. Don't let the right hip drop back as you do the stretch. So these hips forward like so. And also, you don't want to lean forward as you stretch or you take the stretch off. You've got to, got to keep your body upright. And I keep my hand on the pelvis on the, on the side being stretched, which is the right side, just to stop that hip dropping back. So breath in. And then I'm leaning forward to lever the leg backwards. Keeping the body upright and the hips forward. Trying to feel the stretch down here, where the muscle comes down through here. Waiting for the 30 seconds or as long as you need to for that muscle to release. The other side, so hips forward, breath in, and breathe out, leading to the stretch, doing it on the inner thigh, through the groin. Okay, um, we'll do a child's pose now to stretch out the, the glute maximus and the, the, the lower back. So, breath in, knees slightly apart, and breathe out, reaching the arms forwards, and then trying to 
relax your bottom into your heels and let your, your back relax down to the ground. Okay, the, the last thing we're going to do uh, is with a yoga block. I um, mean, you can use a, kind of a big thick book, but the important thing is that you want your lumbar spine in midair and the, the book or the yoga block to be under your sacrum, which is this um, area, this, this big block of bone at the bottom of the spine um, between the pelvis. Uh, you want the lumbar spine to be in midair so it can drop down towards the ground. So we'll put that there, and you expect some discomfort with this as the lumbar spine, the facet joints and the vertebrae are starting to re relax and open out, particularly if you've got stiffness or lower back pain, it will be a bit uncomfortable but that's okay. So if you take a breath in, well the first thing to do is position it directly on the sacrum, so I'm feeling to see that my lumbar spine, the, the area of spine above that big block of bone is above the block and then move a bit. And while you're doing this you're trying to completely relax the whole body. So I'll take a breath in, my hands just relax above my head, breathe out and now I'm just waiting and be aware if you're tensing the spine against the stretch, particularly if it's uncomfortable you might tense against it. So you've got to try and let that go. And you're waiting for the vertebrae to open out, all the little facet joints at the back of the spine open out. This is great for decompressing the discs and, uh, and easing lumbar stiffness as well. starting to open out now and relax. It will take a while. It doesn't happen instantly. Okay, right then. Um, so, um, remember that a rehabilitation exercise and stretching alone isn't often enough to get rid of your lower back pain. Um, often you do need advanced clinical massage as well, or, or possibly an osteopath um, if you need manipulation for fixated joints. Um, also consult a, a doctor concerning any more serious uh, medical uh, problems or musculoskeletal pathologies. And uh, thanks for your time. I'm Kit from Ultimate Advanced Bodywork. Thank you.